we do you believe did exist? As far as the major religions, um, I think it's any, obvious any that um, the earlier, the later religions, it, there's someone, you know, Muhammad existed. That's mm -hmm. well documented by mm -hmm. historians. Mm -hmm. But the farther you go back, the more the characters become more elusive mm -hmm. in their definition. Mm -hmm. Buddha, I, I question if Buddha existed. His, his, his symbology is extremely solar, mm -hmm. just like Krishna. Mm -hmm. And these, of course, are thousands of years before Christ. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think that there's... If, that it's just almost, it's, I don't really focus on it, frankly. I don't really mm -hmm. don't think if they exist or not, it matters. But it, when you go back far enough, there's really no historical documentation, secular. Mm -hmm. So if you can't find that, then all you're kind of looking at is the faith-based texts, which are inherently biased mm -hmm. because of what they actually are. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I really couldn't tell you. I think in, you know, obviously there's the Allah didn't exist per se. It's, it's the, the God that was this redefined element mm -hmm. from, the, from the Old Testament and the New Testament. And then, um, and then, and then, uh, Muhammad, I guess, definitely did exist because it mm. was it was not that far along. It was, you know, it's 800, 900 years after Christ, mm. and there are actual historic documentations. I think he's been interpolated, mm. just as all they all of them have. They've all been they they take the prior faiths and they just build upon it. They're emergent culminations, but the mm. characters are in the stories. Mm -hmm. and you tend to find this um, throughout all religious texts, even to uh, I think to modern modern religions that you find all sorts of strange. Things and things like Scientology, things like this that continue this project, type yes. of these types mm. of patterns. Mm. So uh, I, I think uh, the sadness to me is that most religions are arrogant and they don't realize that they're interconnected. Mm -hmm. And I think if they realized they were interconnected, then there wouldn't be so much dispute. I mean, the problem with religious texts in general is that they're semantically interpreted. Mm. Christianity alone has about thirty-four thousand different subgroups. And they are slightly at odds with each other, you know, mm. slightly the Seventh-day Adventists, you know. Yeah. They, they all have these tiny little variations of their interpretation. I believe that's very dichotomous. And in the end, my major argument towards religion is that it's completely divisive of humanity. So it's not progressive. It has kernels of truth, mm -hmm. but I think it's time most move beyond these dogmas and these faiths mm -hmm. that... Uh, really tend to separate humanity because nothing's going to come positive out exactly. from that type of awareness. Well, I was talking, funny enough, um, to someone the other day about this, like, like we, try, we all want to work together uh, as one humanity, but it's like there's, st there's groups, and then there's groups within groups. Mm. As I was saying to someone the other day, you're pink and I'm blue. Mm. We're st still trying to aim for the same thing, but it, it just dissects people all the time. And in this culture where the world is becoming a smaller place, it's so sad that we're not coming together and we seem to be spreading further apart. Somewhat. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's really sad that, you know, everybody is in their own camp and they don't want to come together. Right. Because there's one slight difference. Sure, everyone sees the differences yeah. between each other and yes. they, they tend not to see the similarities. Mm. Um, in the new film, I have a quote by Carl Sagan, which is very nice. He's like, if an ex extraterrestrial visitor came to the, to the planet, they would probably recognize all the similarities mm -hmm. between the species and tend to see as uh, differences as trivial mm. because we all function in the same environment. Exactly. We all have the same needs pr fundamentally. Um, so I, I think it's a, it's a flaw of consciousness that's mm. happened. And I, I would say, to give it a rhetorical kind of notion, we're barely out of the jungle on this planet as <laughs> exactly. far as consciousness. Exactly. So, you know, I think through time, and that's why I've made the films that I do, I talk about the topics that I do, people will realize that this infighting, and I think it slightly comes from our, our, the, the restrictions of our language, mm. because in order for me to describe something to you, I have to separate things into words, you know, this is a table, this is a glass. So division is inherent in our cognitive awareness, but we haven't reached the spiritual awareness enough to know that even though this is a glass, it's still made of the same thing as this mm -hmm. table, and the fact that it's separate from this table is actually quite suspect. Mm -hmm. It just looks that way because of our five-sense reality. Mm -hmm. Molecularly, when you get into quantum mechanics and you know, high levels of science, it's more of like a sea of molecules that sort mm -hmm. of intermerge, and like, you know, there's different things that uh, happen over time. Time spans that are so vast that we can't really recognize, mm -hmm. so we don't see them. Like, if I have my hand on here long enough, it's going to make an imprint on this table mm -hmm. through the chemicals that will emerge and, and right. come together. So there's, it's, there's no separation. It's an illusion that there's any mm -hmm. type of separation. Just as we're on that subject, um, and I was kind of slightly going off the beaten track, but talking about things making an imprint, uh, sound and vision, ghosts, 
I know I've thrown it into the pot there, but sure. things are being recorded, like we're recording this now. Right. That's something that could come in where things are stuck in time and then something triggers it off. Yeah. Do you, what do you think about that? I've never even much thought to that mm. specifically, mm. but I think there's a lot of possibilities out there that we don't have the ability to recognize. The problem with the human mind typically is that we only see what we've been conditioned to see. Mm. And I mean that very literally. Mm. Um, there's been tests done, psychological tests, where you can you can have a picture and, it, and one side of it will be, inside the picture will be multiple symbologies and they'll gauge, you know, someone's mentality, someone's pr particular state of mind at that point. So say mm -hmm. someone's angry mm -hmm. and they show this picture, the person will immediately recognize the negative attribute in the mm -hmm. picture. And if someone's happy, they find the positive attribute in the picture. So I think we, we project like crazy. So mm -hmm. things that are outside of our general consciousness, I think the reason that they're not recognized by many is because they don't have the vocabulary to recognize it. So phenomenon that would be considered, you know, supernatural mm. to whatever that way might mean. But I would say, generally speaking, that everything is natural. There's no such thing as supernatural. It's only supernatural to the extent that it seems we don't out understand of, it. Yes, it seems out of the ordinary. Yeah. Yeah. So, so mm. things like a ghost, whatever that is, mm. you know, which we say something like that, we have a cognitive notion of what it could be. But you know, these figments that mm. could occur could actually be many, many different things, and most that would experience that are too closed to mm. recognize mm. that in, in general. Exactly. So I well, I always liken it to, my, my expression has always been, it's a higher science that we haven't quite discovered oh, sure. how it works yet. Right. You know, when we see, like, like you say, supernatural phenomena, and then somewhere further on down the line, it's it's explained, and then people go, "Oh, that's how it works." Yeah, just like back exactly. in the back in the old days, you know, they thought that ghosts would possess you and give you illnesses. And <laughs> yeah, we've moved on a bit since then, I hope. Well, yeah, and we will continue to move on and, and discover all sorts of nuances of unexplained mm. things that will f eventually be explained by by understandings and technological mm. understandings mm. that um, mm. that we can recognize. I think. Uh, I think it's an obvious pattern, and that's that's the unique thing about knowledge. There's no such thing as tangible yeah. knowledge, or there's no such thing as a smart person. It's just a matter of time before exactly. everything everything we know is is basically transformed or eradicated. And that's right. And well, it's like a child a child being in a nursery school, as a postman pr professor being in a university. It's just that professor has the has had the time right. to learn everything that he's learned. So it doesn't mean to say that the child, because it's ignorant of, of knowledge, mm -hmm. will not reach that status at one point in its life. Right. And also like we we're talking about frequencies and what you just said before was we say what we want to see. Very often, you know, because yeah. a lot of the time we, we block things out because mm -hmm. possibly it's just too much for our brains to want to take in. We just awesome. don't want the knowledge. Right. And it just reminds me of a story, I don't know if you've heard this, and I, I think it might have been Paul McKenna, I'm not sure, a hypnotist over here, I don't know if you've yeah. heard of Paul McKenna. Yeah. And he was on stage, and there was um, a chap where he had this watch on, and there was the child who was in front of like, the hypnotist, and he was saying, what's, what's on the watch? But he couldn't see because the child was there, but he could see right through the child mm. to see what the inscription on the watch was. So how could he do that? That's fascinating. So he was, the hypnotist made him block out what was in, in front of him, the, the child, right. which was blocking the view to the watch. Right. And he could see right through it. He could give the inscription and everything. And, and I was just absolutely amazed wow. by that. So wow. it just goes to show that you can tune and see, going on to the manek molecular level. Sure. <laughs> So you can see through the fog, as they might say. Right. And just as we're sort of on that subject, if seeing the real picture, because this is what we're talking about to do with Zeitgeist, is seeing the real picture, mm -hmm. um, I feel like, oh, I don't know if you feel like this, that sometimes we are just being tuned in on a frequency just so all we see.